This is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm really excited though. I hope this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till a few more people are here before I actually start talking. I can't wait to see everyone. Uh, we already have a viewer. This is awesome. Um, to my one viewer, I apologize for the delay. I was busy making jackalope tear moonshine, but you can't tell anyone, okay? <laughs> I'm really excited, guys. This is going to be an awesome live stream. I'm just going to wait for more viewers, and it's going to be so rad, you guys. I can't wait to answer everybody's questions, you know, burning questions about JT Leroy. And uh, I'm expecting every single one of y'all to wish me a very, very happy birthday because today JT is turning 38 or whatever age you want him to be. <laughs> Hi to all three of my viewers. We're going to get the live stream, the actual live stream started as soon as we get just a couple of more. And I'm really excited to answer everybody's questions. So um, if you have any questions for when we actually start, uh, please comment your questions down below and I'll be sure to address them as best I can. This is super exciting and I'm really glad that everyone's here to celebrate my birthday and everything. Uh, it's going to be so rad. It's going to be so fucking cool, you guys. I've, I've never been so excited for something in my whole life. You know, my birthday was usually overlooked and such, so this is pretty damn cool. Um, so yes, once again, um, we're about to start the live stream in just a minute and apologize for my delay because I was making that moonshine and, you know, um, so comment your questions down below and be sure to be as clear as possible because I might miss something here or there. <laughs> so I see now we have seven viewers, so we can get this show on the road as soon as I get a question and it's going to be so awesome fucking rad. It's going to be so fucking awesome. I'm excited to see what everybody has to say. Now, in the meantime, I was wondering if maybe I should play some tunes or something. So, I might possibly just play something in the background for you guys to listen to while I'm not actually talking. <laughs> I'm really excited. So, for like the bajillionth time, I'm just going to say it for every new viewer that's watching because we're getting a lot of people like really fast. Like so far we already have nine viewers. So hi to all of y'all. I'm Jeremiah Terminator Leroy and it's my birthday today and I'm really happy that everyone decided to make it. So what I want y'all to do is if you have any questions that you want me to answer, please comment them down below. So I can answer them for you because, you know, as crazy as that jackalope may be, I still can't read minds. <laughs> so I'm ready to get this show on the road. This is super exciting and I've never done anything like it before. So, man, we're up to 12 viewers now. I cannot wait. So, again, submit any and all questions below because, you know, I don't know what you're thinking. So you got you to gotta tell me, okay? So, questions down there in the comments, and I'll answer them as best as I possibly can. And it's going to be so fucking rad. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Fashionably late on my own birthday. Um, Ryan, you're absolutely right. You know, um, I may have been a little busy with uh, some, <laughs> some stuff <laughs> on my special day. <laughs> I'm a great JT. Well, you're a great JT, and everyone's a great JT if you really think about it. So, thank you, Lucas. Let me see. Oh, we already have our first question. This is so exciting. I literally, oh my God, this is awesome. Okay, so, first question is from uh, Kevin Grady, and uh, Kevin wants to know, what do I want most for my birthday? And that's actually a really good question. Um, I think that what I want most for my birthday is for all of you to be able to tune in and tell your friends about it and just have a good time. And I want everybody to come here to this live stream and have a good time with me and listen to me blabber and answer questions. 
and I really just, I want everybody to feel loved and appreciated, even if it's just for this short span of time. I think that the whole point of this live stream is to let y'all know that you're, you're JT too. So I'm JT, you're JT, we're all JT, and we're all gonna have a great fucking time today because it's our birthday. So I'm really excited about this celebration, and I think it's going to end up just wonderful. And I'm really happy to see that we're already at 14, 15 viewers now. So howdy to any and all of you new viewers. Um, it's going to be totally fucking rad. It's going to be so awesome. So thank you, Kevin, for your birthday. But uh, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So as a kind of time filler, since things are just a tad bit slow right now, we are going to talk about my day and if you want you can comment down below and tell me about your day and we can talk about it i mean this is for everybody this ain't just for me this is for all of you lovely viewers as well so what i did today well <laughs> i actually got kind of reunited with an old friend today um as i was making preparations for the birthday and stuff i got a phone call and i was like who could this be, you know? I mean, I get a bajillion calls on my birthday because lifestyles of the rich and famous. But, you know, I got this call from an unknown number, and it wasn't too out of the ordinary. But I answered it, and who did I hear? Well, I heard a very, very familiar voice, and it happened to be Pooh. And I was like, oh, my God, that's Pooh from, you know, Sarah. And I was like, how have you been? And she was like, I'm in Hollywood, and I'm just doing great. So that was interesting. A pretty good present, I'd say. Uh, we finally have another question, and that's pretty awesome. I'll be answering that. So, let's see. Ryan, he wants to know, uh, do you ever go back to the places you've been just to see how far you've come? And uh, I really like that question a lot. Um, you see... I think we all kind of have to go back now and then to see how far we've come because I know, especially lately, there's been a lot of times that I've been discouraged and um, I felt like I can't go on anymore because, honest to God, I feel like I just can't. And uh, I go back to that time like I walk back, you know, to the streets or I walk back to that vacant hotel room and I stare up at it and I just can't help but smile because you know what look where I am now I'm happy I'm having a good life and I got all of you you know and that's honestly that's the best thing I could ever ask for is all of you guys you know but I'm getting off on a tangent so the short answer is yes, I always go back to the places I've been to see how far I've come because I feel like that's necessary. Oh, well, I see we got some more viewers. Um, hi, Michael. It's very nice to see you here. <laughs> uh, pardon any interruption just then. You know, with internets and all, it can get a little crazy. So we got 13 viewers right now. So, hi everyone, it's Jeremiah Terminator Leroy, and, you know, I'm here answering your questions, and I can talk about my day, and anything else that you want to talk about, or you want me to talk about, let's do it, because this is for you guys just as much as it was for me, because, yeah, even though it's my birthday, all of you guys are the ones that made my birthday known, if you know what I mean, I mean, you guys are the reason that I'm here. Uh, you made everything happen, so this is your special day, too, and not to mention it's Halloween, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know it might have been a little uh, hard to tell that it was a holiday or something, but <laughs> anyway, so I want you guys to comment below questions that you have for me. I've already answered a few um, See, when this video ends, if you miss the live broadcast, it's perfectly fine because Facebook will save the video and you can always refer back to it later. And if you ever see, if you ever want a question answered, well, all you got to do is come back to the video and see if JT answered it. And I think that's, that's just awesome, right? Okay, 
So, I finally got another question. This is riveting. This is absolutely, uh, oh, what's the word? Titillating. <laughs> so, Michael, Michael wants to know what are my thoughts on Asia. Um, I don't really want to talk about Asia uh, during this live stream because um, this place is all for love and acceptance and positive vibes and I don't want to talk about anything that's all um, controversial or just bad in general you know so honestly I'm sure you could guess how I feel about Asia but we're not gonna talk about her right now and I'm sorry to have to shut you down like that. I really don't mean to. Uh, but that burning question is just going to have to burn for a little longer. Because um, although it is incredibly unfortunate what happened. And my heart goes out to the children and shit that she's fucked up. Um, I really just can't say much more on that topic. You know, we're here to have a good time. And a positive time. Ah. I got another question. So, hi everybody. Anybody new that's watching, it's a pleasure to see y'all here. Um, I'm really happy that I can be doing this for everyone. Anyhow, so, who wants to know, do you believe the universe is deterministic or do you believe that free will exists? And he said, happy birthday. So, thank you. Uh, I hope that you have a great Halloween today if you celebrate. Um, so... The universe is really, it's a really big gray area because, I mean, if you think about it, what even is free will? I mean, our free will exists to an extent, yeah, but you really got to think about stuff like what manipulates our free will. You know, the things we see every day or the things we saw our parents do if we had them. You know, the things that people around us have done, and etc., etc. So, free will does exist, yes. But, uh, I think that it's probably heavily manipulated by people. And using behavioral studies and sciences and all that stuff that I don't have a degree in, people can learn to manipulate free will. So, the universe is not necessarily deterministic, and free will does exist, but maybe not in the context that everybody thinks it does. <laughs> I hope that made sense. Uh, you know, I'm not like a philosopher or anything, but... Thank you, everybody, for all the happy birthdays. Happy Halloween to everybody, too. I'm really glad that y'all came out to celebrate with me. You know, I know it's a holiday and all, and I think it's really cool that everybody has decided to come and hang out with me. I mean, of all people, you came out to hang with J.T. Leroy, the Terminator himself. So, I'm really appreciative of all of you. So, thank you, uh... What's the Japanese say? Arigato gozaimasu. And, uh, yeah, it just, it really does mean a lot to me. So, happy Halloween, everybody. I want, I want everybody to tell me what they're going as for Halloween. And if they're doing anything fun tonight. Other than tuning into the live stream, of course. Because that'll be really cool. But also, do not forget that this is a Q&A, too. I mean, that's kind of what we advertised it as, but really, this is just a time for us to all celebrate and be happy and joyous and merry, and uh, we're going to have a good time, so we don't, we won't just keep it to the Q&A. I want to hear about you guys' day and just anything you want to know. Ask me down below in the comments, because uh, although the Divine Jackalope is incredibly powerful, uh, I haven't received my uh, omnipotence yet, so uh, we'll see. Mom, I'm expecting it maybe to come in the mail soon, but we'll find out. I still haven't gotten it after all these years. But uh, when I can see all the universe and read all you guys' thoughts, I'll be sure to let you all know. <laughs> so, please comment any questions or tell me about your day or tell me what you're going to be for Halloween down below. I've already talked a bit about my day, but if anyone else is interested, I can talk a little more. So I mentioned earlier that uh, I got to speak with Pooh after forever, and she was like, oh, I'm in Hollywood. And I'm like, you're in Hollywood? Uh, sounds like you're up to no good. You know, and she was like, yeah, well, uh, I'm with Nick Jonas, and we're going to be an item. And I'm like, look, I don't know 
exactly who that is, but good luck with that. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. Um, it was good to talk to her after a long time. You know, I always like catching up with old friends and such. Um, so, I've noticed we've answered quite a few questions, and by quite a few, I mean a few, but you know, some's better than none, and I'm thankful for all of y'all. So, um, soon, uh, like quite soon, we're going to be reading some excerpts from, uh, like, the heart, um, the stories from the heart, because those really do mean a lot to me, and I think that that would be something really fun to do, right? I mean, what, what fun's J.T. Leroy if he's not reading? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not the most, uh, riveting person out there. I mean, my books are good, but that's when I had time to think about them and had a million people editing them for me and all kinds of craziness. So, yeah, I might not be the best, uh, talker and such, and maybe I'm better than I was now, but who can tell? I mean, definitely not me. It's not like I'm paying that much attention. But what I'm trying to say is, soon we are going to be reading excerpts from The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things, and I think it's going to be a really fun time. Ah, we got um, a question from someone on the page, and who it is, I don't know, but let's see. So, they want to know, what is an average birthday for JT Leroy like, and what's my favorite way to celebrate? Well, um... I gotta get kind of depressing here for a minute. Uh, sorry guys, I know I said it was gonna be all positive and lovey-dovey and all that, but really, I gotta be honest for a second. Um, prior to kind of recently, I've felt alone on my birthdays because a lot of people, they would send me uh, like gifts and cake and cards all kinds of people, you know, like the famous people or the not famous people or stuff like that. And it felt really good and it made me happy that people would even remember. But really it all kind of felt a little superficial and hollow, you know. So, um, I liked it. It was really fun. But it also kind of made me wish that I had people like a small group, you know, like people that really genuinely cared. They didn't just care about the fashion or the books or the the literary it boy or anything like that. Um, people like you guys, people that, that have come and come here to celebrate and people that really care about the works and they care about me and they care about each other. So... Nowadays, I'd have to say an average birthday for JT Leroy is going to be a lot like this because usually they're pretty lonely, but we're changing that this year, and I really can't thank you guys enough for it. Like, this is all you, all you other JTs out there in the world. This, my, my heart, it goes out to you guys. So, uh, they also wanted to know what my favorite way to celebrate was, and to be honest, I mean, my favorite way to celebrate would be this. But prior to this, I'd have to say I really like just getting a bunch of jackalope tear moonshine. Just a bunch of it. Just gathering a huge, almost like cauldron of it to get in Halloween spirit. Just down in it and uh, just just hanging out, you know? Like, I know that sounds a little depressing and everything, but... It can be pretty fun, and sometimes I like to flip back through the books and just see how far I've come along, you know, referencing a question from earlier. Uh, it's pretty cool being able to do that. So, yeah, but my favorite way to celebrate these days, definitely this. So, thank you all for that. Uh, without you, JT wouldn't even be here, so I really appreciate it a lot. Um, we got another question. Awesome. So, Kevin Grady wants to know if I have ever seen a ghost. And the answer to that is yes and no. Um, see, it's really touchy. It's kind of weird because, like, yeah, I've seen ghosts all the time. I still see ghosts. 
but they're not like the traditional ghosts. I mean, they're not they're not people walking around with white sheets on their heads saying boo boo, be scared of me. No. Uh, and they're not, you know, the faces of the truckers when you tell them that you are in fact a boy. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. Um, I see a lot of ghosts in people that have kind of given up on themselves. And it makes me really sad cuz it's like they're they're like zombies and empty husks just kind of wandering around and stuff and that's it's pretty sad to see so i see ghosts all the damn time now if you're talking about the real ooky spooky type of ghosts uh i've only seen one of those once and it was this lady she was in my apartment and she was trying to tell me like "Ooh, get out get out and i was like listen lady you're not paying the rent i am so I think if anybody should be getting out, it should be you because you have uh, overstayed your welcome. But luckily, you know, um, people kind of like get it. Like I tell them the story all the time and they're like, no, you didn't really see a ghost. And I'm like, listen, I saw that lady. And you know what? We're friends now. I mean, yeah, she doesn't pay rent and she's dead and makes my room all cold. But you know what? That makes for a good pal in the summer, and I mean it. So, yeah, two kinds of ghosts. You got the empty husks of people when they've just given up on themselves. You know, that's the depressing, realistic type of ghost. And then you got the lady that haunts my apartment, doesn't pay rent, and says, ooh, at me all the time. That's the real paranormal ghost that I saw. So, I hope I answered your question. I feel like I probably kind of answered it a little extensively. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I see a lot of ghosts all the time. And, uh, I want to know, have y'all ever seen a ghost? Or anything like that? I mean, like, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about, like, the spooky kind of ghosts. Like, the lady in the apartment. Or, you know, the, uh, empty people ghost. You know? Yeah, <laughs> freeloader ghost lady, Kevin says. Uh, yeah, but we're at least kind of friends now, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, uh, oh, hi everyone. To any new viewers that are watching, um, I'm doing a Q and A, so please comment any questions down below, cause that would be really cool. I'd love to answer you guys. Um, Michael, he just told me a happy birthday, so uh. Thank you. I hope you have a great and ooky spooky Halloween. <laughs> and thank you so, so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, so glad you're on social media. Well, I'm so glad that you're on social media because um, you're here at my live stream making me feel all special on my birthday. So uh, thanks so much. And uh, I really just, every single one of you, this would not even be possible without all of you and um for the old viewers you know the ones that have sticked around the whole time <laughs> um you're gonna hear this again but uh for all you new people i want y'all to know that uh jt Leroy is not just me um jt Leroy is you too everybody has a little jt Leroy in them and we all possess that sort of um need to be loved and cherished that jt does so JT, regardless of what you look like, is you, and JT is me, and JT is all kinds of cool people. So, uh, thank you all just so much for being here and stuff for me as I ramble on about all kinds of different junk. <laughs> um, thank you for the happy birthdays, everyone. It really means a lot to me. Um, uh, like, sincerely, I really just can't thank you enough like i've never gotten so much genuine love on my birthday like yeah there was always um there was always the celebrities and such that would kind of tell me happy birthday and send all the cards and the gifts and such but um they never uh they never really i don't know maybe they meant it and i mean i hate to say like they didn't mean it but uh really um it just kind of felt shallow you know, like, oh, they're just sending it to JT because JT's what's in right now. Like, uh, you know, you got stuff like, say, oh, I don't know, Jennifer Lopez or something right now. She's pretty famous, right? Or at least I think so. Anyway, you know, now they're with her. And they're sending her all the birthday cards and stuff. And 
maybe I'm not so cool anymore, so I don't really get that many birthday messages like I used to, but when I do, like this right here, it really does mean the world to me, and I, I just can't thank you guys enough for making this birthday a real special one, and you know, this is my first time doing anything like this, and I'm just glad that you guys can be here for it, and maybe if this, I mean, this is going really well, I'd say, and if y'all are interested, I could do another live stream again. And, hey, <laughs> Laura Albert says that I'm doing a great job. So, uh, hi, Laura. It's been a minute, hasn't it? We haven't talked in a little while. I hope you're doing well. As you can see, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> um, Thank everybody for the happy birthdays and such. It really means the world to me. <laughs> Let's see. Ryan says, ramble on. It's in your nature. You know, rambling like being on the road. Do you ever get, for lack of a better word, bored being sound and safe now? So, um, that's kind of a rough question, but I'm more than, like, I, I can answer it. I can do this. I got this. So, um, when I was first getting out of everything, um, when Speedy first came and kind of took me in with Aster and everybody else, I didn't want to be there. In all honesty, I was happy that somebody had come and saved me, but really, I missed it. It was boring, and I was just so used to living my life on the street, you know? And I would say something like, oh, living paycheck to paycheck, but it wasn't even that. You know, I miss the alcohol, and I miss the drugs. And, you know, when I start feeling particularly shitty, I kind of um, relapse, sort of. I mean, I don't go and do anything, but sometimes I wonder, you know, why am I even back in this normal world when I could be doing all that fun stuff? But um, I think, like, this is worth it. These things matter so much to me, and uh, really, I couldn't ask for anything better. So, even though I can get to feeling real bad sometimes about the position I'm in and being safe and sound and all of that, I really, uh, I like the way I am. So, occasionally it gets a little boring when you don't have balloons to do. But, you know what? I'd take that any day. Let's see. I was a super sheltered nerd, shelter, uh, I can't even read. How am I going to be reading short stories if I can't even read the Facebook comments? Let's see, I was a super sheltered nerd child, and I never got so moved as by your stories. Never understood, but so glad you have your talent in books. And you know, I need to tell you all, um, number one, thank you. Thank you so, so, so much because that really does mean the world to me. Like, I can say it a million times, but I want you guys to get it through your head that that really just means a lot to me. Like, my works, um, they came straight from my heart. And the heart may be deceitful, but it's not right now, and I'm speaking from it. So, I want you all to know that these books are written for people like you because a lot of people aren't going to acknowledge your existence. You know, people are going to be like, oh, you're the nerd, or you're the fat one, or you're the too skinny one, or maybe, you know, there's like a race issue or something like that in there. People will discriminate against you and ostracize you for any reason nowadays, and uh, I want you to know that my books are written for you, and you know what? If you've lived the perfect life, my books are for you too. You know, J.T. Leroy is meant to be something for everybody. And the fact that people can appreciate the works and find some sort of joy in them, um, that is really just what means the most to me. So, thank you, all of you, so much for being able to see the beauty in the works and just valuing what it means to be a J.T., if that makes any sense. You know, every single one of you is J.T. Leroy, too. So, uh, happy birthday, everyone. <laughs> so, um, you know what? I think it's high time to, uh, read some excerpts from The Heart is Deceitful. <laughs> I think it's high time to read some excerpts from The Heart is Deceitful above all things. And, of course, I'm going to be starting with my absolute favorite, Bullens. So, 
let me retrieve my book real fast like <laughs> this is going to be awesome seriously y'all don't even know uh, I hope you're ready let me just waddle on over and then waddle on back okay so here I have one of my more like uh let me think so this book is full of um like tougher topics you know um the heart isn't for everyone but you know what? I mean, it kind of is. <laughs> the heart is for everyone that can stomach it. I guess it just showcases the hard truths of life. So I'm going to be reading some excerpts now, including um, balloons. So let us begin. As soon as I, uh, you know, find my page, I'm a little all over the place today, in case you couldn't tell. I've had sort of a, uh, a strange day today. I mean, it's my birthday and I'm excited, but, you know, when you got something like this going on, you get a little kooky and a little stressed. So, I'm going to be reading balloons right now. And to any new viewers, by the way, uh, hi, I'm JT, Jeremiah Terminator Leroy. As you may or may not know, it is Halloween and it is also my birthday. So, thank you all very much for tuning in and I hope everyone enjoys and I will now be reading an excerpt from the short stories from the heart is deceitful above all things it was something I always knew heroin coming in balloons was a special message to me that heroin comes in balloons the Mexicans keep it in their mouths little knotted balloons spit it into your hand if you're for real swallow it if you're a cop Crayon used to joke that I bought the heroin just for the damn balloon, because I never cut the balloon, only if I'm on the run and getting sick. But even then, I feel like this guy in some movie I saw where he slices open his loyal dog and puts his hands in it to keep warm. I sit there and pick at the knot on the balloon, drive anyone with me crazy waiting for me, but they know better than to snatch it from me and rip it open. I save all the balloons. I save them because the truth is, I do buy for the balloons. Yeah, I smoke, shoot the dark tar clump inside. I have to do that. Like buying baseball cards, you gotta chew the crappy gum that comes with them. But the balloons are the only thing that's really gonna save me. And they know it, and I know it. I keep them hidden in a cigar box under some bushes in Golden Gate Park. As soon as I get ten balloons, I dig up the box and carefully place the new ones inside. I like sitting alone in the silence of the park at night, shining my flashlight on my collection. I bury my face in their sticky, damp, hollow bodies and inhale their rubbery glue-like scent. Then I lie on the grass with the torn balloons that were my mother's draped over my closed eyelids like a coins on a dead person, and I'm so comforted and soothed, I drift right to sleep. Before I continue, I just want to thank you all for the happy birthday messages. I'm currently reading um, Balloons, one of the new short stories from The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. I hope everybody enjoys. I'm going to continue now. One Mexican on 16th in Valencia sold for crap smack, but he had Tegla silver balloons. So I bought from him instead of the Mexican with good deal in black balloons. No one knows about my collection, and I won't tell until the time. I've had my plan forever, but I can't just go buy balloons. They have to be in special magic balloons, baptized by saliva, made holy by the fear of getting busted with them, and transformed to the sacred by all the desires floating into tension surrounding them. Our sweat, our fear, and my love. In my box, I still have some of the red balloons my mother would slash apart with her long red nails. When I would try to open them my way, picking the knot apart slowly, she'd scream for me to fill up the goddamn works or she'd die. And I'd slash them open too. But one day, I knew I'd buy my own balloon. I go to sleep at night and dream of my balloons. I try to decide how many I'll need. I put my hands between my legs and rub where it feels good, and I imagine them filling the sky, as they will 
like a leaking gumball machine in heaven. The heroin inside, to tell you God's honest truth, is to just tide me over until it is the time. It will be a clear day, no clouds, no wind, just a blue buttermilk sky. Crowds will gather, smiling and joyous. A clown with oversized shoes with yellow pom-poms on the end will breathe life into my balloons with helium-filled red lips. People will surround me and slowly attach one filled balloon after another. My silvers, my blues, my greens, and my yellows, tying them to my outstretched arms and legs. I will announce to them that it is finally the time. They will all cry and tell me they'll miss me, but they know this is a miracle. This is the plan, as it always has been and must be. I feel myself getting lighter as branches of balloons spring from every limb. I tell them not to cry. I must rise for their sins. I'm the Lord's outcast, and I will face him for all outcasts. I will refuse to leave heaven, and I will offer up the black heroin I once hid from my mother and wouldn't return to her, even as her fist beat against me, even as she lay shaking and sweating, howling like a trapped fox, and I sat ignoring her watching TV. The sacrifice of my gift shall cause Jesus to weep at my feet. I can barely feel the ground, and with one more dark red balloon repaired from my mother's fingernails, I'm released. I fly like I do in my dreams, the cheers below becoming distant, up into the blue, up to God and Jesus. I am the Holy Ghost coming for their redemption, whether they like it or not. This is the plan and always has been since I saw it done years ago on TV on Sesame Street. A little boy, lovingly encased by balloons, flying out from the chairs below while his absent mother dies somewhere below. So, um, as I'm sure you all um, got from that, uh, that was balloons from The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. And uh, this is in the, uh, the new edition of the book. So I hope y'all can all get a copy of that soon because uh, it would just be really great and I appreciate any and all support. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed despite its uh, somewhat depressing nature. <laughs> um, I haven't read for anyone in quite a long time so I'm a little, uh, I'm not the best at it but you know, um, what does it matter? <laughs> it doesn't matter how good I am at it, right? I wrote the damn books. <laughs> So, um, yes, this is still a and a by the way. Um, I want y'all to know, uh, I want y'all to know that you can still ask me questions down below, and I'll still be answering them. And in just a few minutes, I'll be reading another, uh, short story. So, please ask any and all questions that you have, and you know what, if I can't answer it, then, uh, I'll just tell you, because y'all deserve my, my utmost honesty or whatever, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited though, like, this is so awesome, this is just so riveting to me, and all of you guys, thank you for the happy birthday wishes, it really just, it means the world to me, like, I could cry right now, uh, just, thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot for everything, um, without you, I'd probably be dead, honestly, um, not to get depressing again, Ooh, ah, but it is Halloween, and that means I can get a little spooky, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, ah, we got another question from uh, Lou Duncan. So, hi, I'm JT, as y'all know, and I'm answering this question now. Um, Lou wants to know, what books do I like to read? Um, I really, I enjoy all kinds of different genres and stuff, and I especially enjoy some types of fiction because, um, you know, fiction can kind of pull you out of your situation and put you into another one that's a little more like, <laughs> that's a little more like a mystical or fantastical. You know, you can take yourself out of the bad times and put yourself into the good with the help of a fiction book. 
Um, I'd have to say one of my favorite books is probably 10th of December by George Saunders. It's a, it's another collection of short stories and he is a very, very talented author. So if you like the books that I wrote, well, I would recommend checking out the books he wrote because, uh, he's a big inspiration to me. And, uh, yeah, so fiction most definitely. And honestly, I really like historical fiction too because, um, with historical fiction, I like, I don't know, I just like feeling like I'm back in the old days, you know, fighting in a war or preventing some horrible disease or stuff like that. So, fiction, for me, is a good way to just calm down and such, you know. And uh, some psychology books are even good to help me. And I know that sounds like uh, it's probably really boring, but uh, they can be really helpful sometimes, like... Uh, I think a really important book for everyone to read at some point in their life if they're feeling real shitty is um, Healing the Shame That Binds You by, uh, oh gosh, what's his name, Mr. John Bradshaw, I believe it is, uh, Healing the Shame That Binds You, because that has helped me through a lot of stuff, and maybe it can help you guys too. And I want you guys to read, 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 not just my books. Read, read, read. You have to read all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so, um, everybody, uh, hi to any new viewers. Um, uh, my name is Jeremiah Terminator Leroy. It is my 38th birthday, and I don't look a day over 12. So, um, yes, I know. I'll have the paparazzi outside my window any minute. But, um, any questions that you want me to answer... Um, please ask down below and here shortly I will be reading yet another excerpt from uh, The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things and I think it's going to be a really good time so I look forward I look forward to it um, also somebody mentioned um, Healing the Child Within which is another very very good psychology book um, I think anything really that kind of teaches you how to bring back that child in a healthy way is a good book like I mean it's great so um I'm gonna move on to my next question now but if you wanna um if you wanna chat about psychology books or books in general later you're welcome to hit me up anytime so um Anthony Albert um he wants to know if I have a girlfriend <laughs> um the answer is no um, I don't have a girlfriend because, um, I don't really, I'm not, uh, it's, it's a tough topic. I really, um, still kind of fixated on Aster, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, I don't have a girlfriend and I don't really think I need one because I can barely take care of myself. How am I going to take care of a, a pretty little, a lady or something, you know? She'd have to take care of me. If I needed a girlfriend, it wouldn't be a girlfriend. She'd be more like a mom. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so no, I don't have a girlfriend. I'm single and not so sure I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> so, thank you for asking. Sorry if I let you down. But, uh, yeah, no girlfriend for JT. Ah, uh, um, hi and happy birthday. I'm a new fan, really new, and I want to ask, which of your books should I start with? Um, so, I would say, let me think here. I would say probably you should start with Sarah, the book that really caught me out there. And thank you, by the way, um, thank you for being interested in the stories that I have to tell because it makes me incredibly happy. Like, it just makes my heart sing to be able to know that people want to know about the books and stuff. So I would say maybe start with Sarah, okay? And if you can handle the contents of Sarah, because I understand that a lot of people can be squeamish about it, you know, if you can handle the contents of Sarah, um, I implore you to read The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. Because, you know, if you can handle the subject matter in Sarah, you could probably stomach The Heart is Deceitful. And you know what, if you really want to read a short, a short one, then you could read, um, Harold's End. Because, um, Harold's End, it's short. It's sweet, and, uh, it's sad if you like sad books, but I won't say anything. I'm not gonna spoil for you. So, um, yes, start with Sarah, and I really do hope that you enjoy the books, and thank you. Jules wants to know, uh, 
how does it feel to be 38? Um, well, it feels kind of like I should probably grow up a bit more on the inside. You know, like, a lot of people are like, oh, JT, you've had to deal with so much, you know, like, how are you going to cope and blah, 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 and you had to grow up way faster than people your age, and I'm just like, I really don't feel like I'm much older than I was when I first released the books, and that's a big thing. I mean, so being 38 is kind of odd to me because it's like, I'm 38, I'm an adult, like, what am I going to do with myself? Um... It's just odd. It's kind of a shock, to say the least. But I'm glad I made it through another year with the support of people like you guys. Um, it really does mean the absolute world to me. So thank you for your question and such. I appreciate it. Hmm. Let's see. Gotta read. Ah, so Lisey wants to know if I like having a um a halloween birthday yes and no so the thing about halloween birthdays is uh everybody expects me to dress up and i'm just kind of sitting here like you guys i don't need to dress up like and they're like jt come on just do something different and i'm like no this is my birthday it's my party and i don't have to dress up if i don't want to so <laughs> um yeah, having a Halloween birthday is really a lot of fun. I like kind of seeing people going out and having fun. I just don't really like joining them because really, uh, in all honesty, I'm still a little shy. <laughs> like, big crowds kind of give me the anxiety and stuff. But, um, I like having a Halloween birthday because I get a bunch of candy. And, you know, who needs, who needs a cake when you got people coming to your door? And they're all like, oh, trick or treat. And I'm like, hey, hand over the bag, you know. <laughs> I'm just joking with y'all. I would never take a kid's candy unless that kid um, really just fucking annoyed me, you know. So, <laughs> so that's the answer to that. So thank you for your question. And I'm moving on. Uh, to sum it up, Halloween birthday is pretty good, I guess. I think it's neat. I have a birthday in general. Let me read. Did I like... The documentary um so if you're referring to author the JT Leroy story um I loved it I mean it's really freaking it's really great um author of the JT Leroy story was able to tell my story in a way that I really couldn't get out there by myself like author the JT Leroy story kind of like signal boosted everything <laughs> I mean it like it signal boosted me and my reasonings for doing things it signal boosted the people that I love and care about and most importantly it signal boosted the works and I don't care about that for the money I care about that because people should read these books and be like oh my god this happens to other people too I write about the fucked up stuff because I feel like nobody deserves to feel like they're alone you know what I mean I mean I kind of got off on a tangent there sorry but uh hopefully that made sense um yeah, <laughs> so thanks for the question. I really appreciate it. Do I recommend the movie The Heart is Deceitful above all things? Um, now, that's kind of complicated. I, the movie was pretty good. I, it was okay. Um, I don't really, I can't really say if I recommend it or if I don't recommend it. Um, they cut a lot of stuff that I thought was pretty important, and, um, it kind of hurt. The movie, it isn't bad, but definitely I wouldn't recommend trying to use it as a substitute for the books. You know what I'm saying? I hope that made sense, and it didn't sound too selfish or anything like that. But, um, would I recommend the movie? I don't know. That's up to you guys. What do you think about in the dead of night now unfortunately um oh yes refer to other. sorry <laughs> um so what do i think about the dead of night in all honesty i have no idea what the fuck you're talking about and i promise you i didn't do any balloons today i'm just kind of all over the place so apologies but i'm gonna skim over that one because i'm a little ooh, kooky today but um uh, thank you for your question regardless i'll get back to you on that one 
Um, someone asked me um, if I go online often like this. And to answer that, um, no, I don't. I, I've never been uh, in a live stream or anything like this. Uh, but uh, other than this time, and uh, I'm really nervous, like I'm sweating like a hog, sweating like a whore in church in here, you know? And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nerve-wracking, but to see all the love and appreciation from you guys and to see people, like-minded people and people that love the books and love me, and I hope you know I love y'all too so, so much, um, it's really special. So, to answer, no, I've never uh, done anything like this before, but I'm really happy that everyone's tuning in and I'm glad that y'all think that I'm fun and stuff. I've really come out of my shell a lot um, over the past few years and I hope I can help you guys with that too. So, um, my name is Laura and I'm grateful you answered my question. La da 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 da. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, Laura, yes, hello. So, um, of course, I'm going to answer your question, silly, and I'm happy that it made you happy that I was able to answer your question. I'm happy that you asked it. So, um, you're very welcome. Um, I'm really glad that people, uh, learned about the books from author because, I mean, how great is that? You know, they saw the documentary and they thought it was interesting enough to check it out. So, I'm really happy. <laughs> um, so, Laura, you're wonderful. I like that name. Um, I like the name Laura a lot. I kind of fixated on it. But, um, yeah, <laughs> love it. So, um, yeah, that's all my questions for now. So if anybody has anything else, I'd be happy to answer. Um, let me check the time real quick. You know, I'm kind of just, like, rambling and such. I've never really done anything like this, so schedules, psh, what are those? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's almost time we end the live stream. We got like a few minutes left. But um, you know what, I'll stay a little bit longer for you guys. Let me adjust my camera here. I don't want it to like fall or anything. That's a little worrisome. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, Laura says she also relates so much to a lot of the mental health stuff. And what I have to say is to that is um, I think a lot of people do. And I'm really, it it's... I don't want to say it's good that you relate because nobody should have to suffer. I mean, in all honesty, it sucks. Like, it really, really sucks. But, um, I mean, I'm glad that I can be somebody that you can relate to. And I'm glad that I can be somebody that's here to help you in any time that you need with the books and just everything like I'm just I'm so appreciative of all you guys and if I can be an, uh, an outlet for you guys if you can get sucked into the books and stuff and understand the issues there and all of that then uh awesome great <laughs> um of course I mean you guys are amazing and I wouldn't be here without you you're all wonderful and Laura that definitely includes you so thank you um Lisi says that she doesn't want to see the movie because it doesn't doesn't want to mess up how she visualized the book. And honestly, I completely agree when it comes to stuff like that. Whoa! Oh, guys, the camera almost fell, but I saved it because I'm awesome. Anyway, so I completely agree with that because, like, I mean, if you really think about it, books are such an artistic work. Like, say, like, you know that Shakespeare guy may have heard of him, kind of famous, you know, he's whatever. But uh, he wrote in poetry, and it was just so beautiful and stuff. And a lot of people visualize Shakespeare in different ways and have all kinds of different adaptations. And, you know, I don't think anything will ever be the way you visualize it in your mind. And unless somebody somehow gets in there and is all like, hey, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm stealing all your thoughts and I'm going to make a movie directly from how you visualize this book. I don't think anything will ever beat that. <laughs> so, um, yes, I completely agree. Um, Alexander says I'm looking good. Alexander, I think you're looking good. And thank you so much for the, uh, the comment. So I'm going to read one more comment and then I'm going to read a bit more from the book. I'm going to read another short story and then we're probably going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. I'm having a lot of fun with you guys. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read two more comments because I just got another question. But, um, I've ha I'm having a lot of fun with you guys and I really appreciate you coming out. Um, so thank you. 
um, like it's just it's so awesome. So um, Ryan says, if there is this pain and anguish, and if we can relate, we should, and then we can laugh like jack o' lanterns on your birthday. That's awesome. That I I appreciate that. I want everybody to just start laughing and howling, like <laughs> just everybody start laughing like jack o' lanterns. I love it. Um. So last question, uh, Jules wanted to know. Uh, who are your biggest creative influences right now? And that's kind of a tough question because, God damn, I have so many creative influences. It's insane. Like, it's fucking nuts. Um, golly, there's just so many people. Like, who do I even name? My biggest creative influences. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know how to begin to answer that question, you know? There's just so many amazing people out there that have inspired me so much. And I've just kind of, um... Taken all the stuff that they wrote and they said and they produced and all the music they've written and the arts that they made and I've just kind of slapped them into my works, you know, let them inspire me and uh, yeah, so too many um, creative influences to really name for that one. But, uh, I appreciate you asking. I might be able to come back to you with a like 500 name long list sooner or later. <laughs> um, okay, so ah uh, uh, okay you know what one more question because i really just can't help it i love when you guys ask me stuff so um what music do i love right now what have i been listening to i love this question because in all honesty music means a lot to me like seriously i don't think anything has helped me through shit more than music and writing and really music like it's so beautiful and wonderful and amazing, and you can do so much different stuff with it. So, um, lately I've been listening to a lot of different stuff. Um, there's this one kind of alternative-ish band in particular. Um, they broke up in, I believe, 2013, but I just listened to their stuff because, um, it makes me really happy. There's this band, it's called Tally Hall, T-A-L-L-Y-H-A-L-L, -L -L, and, um, their songs are just so fun and full of life that I listen to them, and it just, it's just so awesome. And right now, um, recently, there's this, like, YouTube celebrity or something like that. Um, her name is Poppy, P-O-P-P-Y, and um, she just released a new album today, and I've really been listening to that a lot because I think it's really cool. Uh, there's a song on there on that new album called um, Am I a Girl, and the lyrics are about um gender norms and stuff like that i mean like it's just kind of it's about androgyny you know because people are poppy she's questioning herself she's like hey am i a girl because sometimes i feel like this and sometimes i feel like this and i really feel like that i can relate to that um strongly so i've been listening to that quite a bit it just came out today so if anybody's interested i'd be happy to know what y'all think of that song um, so now it is time to read another short story from the new edition of The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. Um, so let me find a good one other than all of them. Obviously, I mean, the famous J.T. Leroy wrote them. <laughs> Anyhow, let's see here. There's just so many in here. Sometimes I don't even know which I should read, you know? Like, some of them are a little much. <laughs> Let's see. I'll read trick question, because, um, honestly, that was, like, one of my favorites. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I just, I'm reading the comments and stuff, and I'm just so happy, so thank you guys. Um, we're gonna wrap up with trick question. It's more of a darker story. Um, but what's new there, am I right, you guys? I write about the dark shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's end this with a, with a bang. <laughs> so, trick question by J.T. Leroy. I didn't know where we were going as we drove through the park. I just knew we were going somewhere. That would be in black and white. Even in old gangster films. Dudes always get what's coming on gray dilapidated wooden docks that always catch the shadows of the angry surf surging in the black and white beneath them. 
Kamal says nothing to me. Just hums along with the gospel on a CD and nods his head yes, back and forth. More from habit than actual agreement. Lordy, lordy, Kamal sings, barely moving his mouth while patting the red leather steering wheel cover as if he were common and excited dog. I scrunch down in my seat to try and see my face in the outside door mirror. All I can see is my bruised mouth, bruised mouth and trees. Park looks all spooky just driving through at night, huh? I knock on my window with my knuckle. What? He stares straight ahead. Uh, Parks, I'm listening to my music. Do you mind? He doesn't look at me. No, sorry. I try creeping my hand between my legs, but everything there is curled up into my guts and just sitting there like a big lump of undissolved aspirin. Here say Jesus, come all sings out thunderously with the choir making me jump. Amen, I call back loudly. What? He slaps the wheel. My grandfather's a preacher, see, and he says Jesus himself ordained him to. Look, I don't give a fuck about your grandmama or whoever the fuck. He reaches toward the ashtray fast and jerks it open. I jump again. He pulls out a small plastic container. I watch him pour a bunch of Tic Tacs into his mouth and start grinding them down between his teeth. May I have one? Kamal shoots me a look. No, you may not have one. He shakes his head. We sit in the silence of the music as the park moves past us. Um, if that was a shirt winter green winter mint, you know, it would, it would spark like if you bit into it. What the fuck is wrong with you? In a blur of his black and white raiders jacket, his arm flies out and his palm thuds on my forehead. My head bounces off the headrest. Getting bit, getting hit on the forehead always makes me feel so retarded, like I'm that kid in mask, and my skull is amazingly huge. It makes an embarrassing noise too. The thud, a smack or slap, is way more sexy or sympathetic. Okay, okay, sorry. I adjust myself back into my seat. I just uh thought you might want to know. Uh, certs are pretty more dangerous. Uh. Retson, I mean, what's that? You gotta wonder, so I agree with you. Tic Tacs are probably... His hand swings out again, and I snap my head back before he even gets to smack it. He pauses a second, like a video game with a glitch, and then knocks my forehead so it bounces on the headrest again, as if we were playing handball with my skull. If you're a black and white gangster, you never cough out blood, no matter how many blasts you take. You can even sit up, and say some cool shit like, Top of the world, ma, or You got me, copper. But if it's in color, then you always vomit blood in your guts up. I inspect the car dash for the black and white switch. Tic Tac's probably safer, I whisper, and a slap flies across my mouth backhanded. The choir sings his praises. Joy, 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 way too loudly. Joy, joy, joy. I turn to the window and watch the trees looking like a forest in the dark, watching me. I lick at the blood around my mouth. When I'm living in the park, the trees are my turrets, surrounding my castle penthouse. They are my bodyguards to disappear into. I don't feel afraid at night, even if I'm alone. Suddenly, boom! Glass shatters and sprays all over. Broken mirror-type shards splinter into his eyes, exploding them like pop rocks. A huge wooden spear suddenly descends, stabbing through Kamal's guts, just like in the omen, when this priest acquires a flying tree through bow, slice through him diagonally. My trees stoop down before me, helping me out, their leaves apologetically sweeping the glittering glass chunks off of me. I turn to watch Kamal projectile vomit, vomit in bloody intestines and crap, while long, bony branch limbs pull him out, and I hear it. Chomp! His legs kick helpless in the air. Chomp, chomp! This is my park! I scream as the trees eat him. We drive on, the trees only making distorted, darker shadows that reflect me more back in the car window. I keep wiping at the blood trickling down my chin in brilliant color, and I watch as the trees open and the road spills out past the old windmills to the beach. I know I should be hearing my heartbeat, like in all those movies. At times like these, that's what's supposed to happen. But all I hear is a frenzied gospel of witnessing, singing it, crying it, screaming it, 
fast organ keeping pace like a hardcore punk song, all his glories coming together. I've been there, felt the certainty of his spirit. Even if you could hold the viper cradled in your arms, the devil would not bite, for your faith and his strength are beyond all fear and reproach. I feel calm as we drive along the deserted stretch of beach in the park overlooking Ocean Beach. Now, let me tell y'all, that wasn't the whole story, but uh, I'm going to be one of those types of folks and say that if you want the rest of the story, please um, check out The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things, the new edition. Um, it's really great. Includes all the stories in it, um, way more than the two I just read. So, um, yeah, I really look forward to that. And if you guys do um, get the books, then please tell me what you think. Um, message the page anytime. We always um, accept messages and stuff. And uh, yeah, I think um, I had a really good time. Like a really good time with you guys. Um, you made me feel loved and you made me feel just so happy. And I can't thank y'all enough for everything you've done for me. Um, you got me here. So this is my thanks to you. So everybody, I hope you all have a very very happy Halloween and um thank you for the birthday messages etc so please uh be safe out there uh, a lot of scary fucked up people in this world but uh you got this so JT is you and me and everybody in the world so um there's a little bit of JT Leroy in all of us so in that case I guess I'll just say happy birthday everyone uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope we can do this again sometime soon. Until then.